Well, it looks like the markets took a turn, but that was to be expected because everybody expected the Greek default to be coming around to, to happen. And also in the news is the problems with Puerto Rico, believe it or not. So uh, they got some insurmountable problems. And, you know, there's other problems going on in actually major cities in the United States. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to say something about uh, a few things going on here because, first off, you know, the writing's on the wall for a lot of a lot of things, and common sense goes a long way because, you know, the situation is, even in, since the end of the last financial crisis in 2008-2009, the real money that to be made was mainly in finance and health. Finance and health. But then you start thinking about exactly what constitutes finance and health. A lot of things, a lot of people are connected to the... Uh, banking industry have always been the ones that have been the part of the one basis of point. And also, when you're looking at health, there's so many rackets involved with, you know, pharmaceuticals and not really true health or true nature, true healing through nature. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's you know, it's the thing to mask the symptoms, but there's big bucks involved in it. But supposedly, when you're making money in those type of things, I don't really think you're making, I don't think you're actually helping people. You know, that's the thing. I don't think it's actually a contribution to the greater good, that's for sure. So, um, you know, that's one reason I look at these numbers, these economic numbers, in different ways because even if the numbers went down, it could mean that we have it better. If the numbers go up, it could mean we have it worse. The numbers don't always reflect what's going on. Now, actually, I saw some things about uh, what Donald Trump said about Kerry. Uh, <laughs> he'd be the first guy he'd fire that was, you know, uh, the White House advisor, basically Secretary of State. And, you know, actually, I think Kerry should best be uh, looked at as how he was during his Vietnam days, you know, basically turning tote on uh, the United States of America, criticizing his policies. But, of course, when he's up there in the driver's seat, it's a different story. But Trump says he's a terrible negotiator, so, you know, Kerry. Uh, I agree with him, but, uh, you know, it looks like the, the powers that be, and you can see who the powers that be are, the major media, NBC, they actually uh, fired Trump, you know? Um, and really, this is one of the reasons we got all these kiss-ass politicians out there, because the powers that be really, I guess you really can't define them, but you know, a lot of people think it's it's Trump, but it's not. Maybe it's uh it's a collection of other people, maybe like Soros and things like that. Um, they got other agenda on their mind. And, you know, even though I, I put out a couple of videos, I'm actually freaking really pro Trump on what he said and a lot of different things. But it uh, looks like NBC didn't like it. So they basically tried to, well, they said they fired Trump from The Apprentice and the USA Beauty Pageant. And they won't host that anymore. But, you know, I almost look at it like this way you know, NBC. You're on a way out anyway. CBS, it, it, I think all the television's on a way out. It is. Within 10 years from now, television's going to be dead. There's not going to be any television anyway. So it's he who has the last laugh, last laughs best. Because I don't even think these these biggest uh, media mongols that have actually been now attacking Trump, I'm uh, really thinking about what's on. You know, well, they're they're out. They're old news. They're old news. You know. But, uh, you know, so I could tell you one thing, you know, we know Jay Leno thinks about NBC. He'd rather be on YouTube showcasing his motorcycles and cars. <laughs> and I'm sure he's uh, doing his act in Las Vegas and everything because, uh, you know, it's, it's a matter of who the hell needs these freaking suits behind the scenes to be telling people what to think and what to do. And, hey, you know, Jay, you know, it, it's that's that's how I look at it, so... You know, the the World Wide Web has changed the way people get information, the way people get entertainment anyway. So who the hell cares, you know? So, <laughs> you know, I look at it like, Kerry, you know, you should be out of this situation. Your freaking, your negotiations with Iran are terrible. You freaking, you negotiate like a, a like a, a drunken sailor or a drunk, drunken woman on a motorcycle, for crying out loud. It's not a good combination. But considering that guy's got a background of freaking uh, protesting us and sticking us, and sticking the U.S. government right, right in the eye when we were in the middle of Vietnam, I don't know how the hell he ever became Secretary of State. But then again, you got to figure we got 
George Soros and the puppet master with Obama here. And, you know, what does Soros always say? Weak in the United States, we doesn't like them, right? So, anyway, um, the situation, you know, as you're looking forward now for silver, I know a lot of people are probably, you know, thinking, hey, silver didn't go up today because the markets went down. It didn't really do nothing. It's, you know, one of a penny or something. Now, palladium, actually, palladium took a major hit, which is not surprising because... Palladium is tied to the industrial market. It's a metal that's over 90% industrial. But eventually, I think it's actually going to do better than gold. But, you know, it's not one of those things you're going to um, be able to forecast on a daily basis. That's for sure. But I think palladium actually will do better than gold. But, you know, during this time when if the markets get hit really, really bad, do expect palladium to get hit pretty damn good, too, because of... Uh, it's ties to the industry of all the industries it's tied to because it's over 90 percent uh, industrial metal um i think though that what's going to really push up silver and gold is well basically the fact well gold especially and si silver's since silver's tied to gold is when we get into more financial crises and i think this is just going to snowball it's one thing after another it's not going to be one specific event uh, the Greek crisis is one, but you know you got the Puerto Rican crisis, you know, coming up now too. And the other thing is, you know, it's not going to be like Santa Claus is going to come by and freaking just dump a bunch of money in everybody's laps. You know, they've already been doing this. They've already been printing money to the max, and they've already been trying to freaking stimulate the economies. And it's not going to just occur where, oh, we can print our way out of it. And it, and the situation is, if they keep doing that. It's just going to make any hard assets, which gold will be one of them, and silver will be another one of them, and platinum and palladium will go up in value. So I think that's actually exactly how they're going to react to the situation. You know, raising the interest rates and stuff in, in, in September, I don't think that's going to happen. You know, I know that, I know that was, uh, I think it was June 17th was the last meeting they had with the Fed. You know, basically it was a nothing. It was a nothing meeting. You know, they pushed everything off till later on. But I don't think they're going to be able to raise their interest rates now. And, you know, so everything is so weighted into the dollar right now that the situation could start changing the other way. And what I think was going to, well, also we know something else that's going to happen. China very likely is going to be a world reserve currency by the end of the year. Not the world reserve currency but it's going to join the basket. So, you know, that's going to actually take a lot away from uh, the U.S. dollar because people that invest in U.S. dollars, not that they're going to all dump out of the dollar all at once, but they're going to start jumping out of it. They're going to start, it's going to take some of it out of the U.S. dollar, some of it out of, US, out of the euro, and moving into the Chinese yuan. That's going to probably happen by the end of the year. Because the IMF is going to vote on it either in October or November. And the situation is now with Chinese economy being maybe the strongest in the world and their exports being up several times since the last time the IMF voted on, to the, on, on that issue. It's going to happen where China will be a world reserve currency. And that will take some of the cloud out of the dollars, no doubt about it. But, you know, while we're, you know, you know, um focused in on gay and lesbian rights and all this type of stuff and the confederate flag and there's other issues that are going on that are freaking far more important and you know it's almost like the issues that you see in the main headline are almost like diversions you know, everybody's celebrating you know the supreme court decision on a gay lesbian bisexual marriages and you know we got a lot of other flying things that are going on right now that are actually far more important that's going to affect the health, welfare, and financial vitality of everybody in the United States. And it's, it's coming up like an avalanche. You know, this Greek, this Greek default issue was coming up for a long period of time. And then when it happens, you know, it's, I don't know what's going to happen by tomorrow. But the thing is, you know, there's other issues coming up where we also, there's also a lot of problems in Puerto Rico. But there's a lot of problems throughout many cities in the United States, even in California, too where cities can be defaulting and 
you know, you know where I think the situation is going to come about is because since the federal government is so heavily leveraged, um, not the federal government, the Federal Reserve is so heavily leveraged. In other words, they got so much on their balance. They got so many troubled, uh, troubled ba um, assets that they bought up at high dollar to shore up, um, you know, the largest banks and what happened in the last 2008-2009 financial crisis. They really got no way to go but try to spend their way out of it. But there's absolutely no way they can really unwind their balance sheet, the Federal Reserve balance sheet. It's in other words, it's like, you know, big Santa Claus comes by and buys everything up at the price you think it should be, and, you know, even though it went down to like uh, a tenth of the price or the twentieth of the price, you know, the market went down that bad and it, and it kept money rolling in your pocket, but then they got they got those assets right now and that's exactly what's going on where the Federal Reserve has a load of trouble assets on its balance sheet which are talking with uh, that are valued at cost and, and if they really had to sell them they they wouldn't be worth that you know it's almost like a, a sham shell operation you know you moved it from one area to the other so you know somebody bought it but then that's somebody which the federal reserve they got a problems where how are they going to unwind all those trouble assets and they, they can't. They really can't. They can't. So this is going to be a difficult situation. It really can't just grow the economy with magic. The only way they can grow the economy is to actually put the stimulus into people who actually work hard. You know, the people that are actually out there trying to kickstart the economy, not the freaking Wall Street yo-yos that are freaking up on the top. And this has always been their mistake. And this is why every time they try new stimulus, it doesn't really work. Because it sits in the hands of these suits... And these people that are basically, you know, they're desk jockeys to the max. They will not pick up a wrench, pick up a hammer, pick up a shovel, whatever the heck it is, or pick up surveying instruments and get out there and do something. They are basically people that are, even though they're work, maybe they work hard, they're constantly people that are basically, you know, shuffling paper or shuffling computer chips, <laughs> whatever, shuffling electrons on the on the 64-bit systems they have you know in, in things that aren't actually producing something solid and tangible so you know until the actual if they actually took the stimulus and they gave it to the people that were our true drivers of the economy yeah it would probably really work but they don't do that that's the problem it always goes into the hands of the biggest the two bigs to fail so anyway um you know, I'm going to tell you something else. It's an inter another interesting thing that came up aboard. Um, the, another thing, uh, you know, about, I always said some videos about the EPA and the, uh, you know, they're trying to outlaw freaking, uh, you know, uh, wood-burning stoves. And they're talking about, uh, what the hell was it, the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the outdoor barbecues was another thing. And, you know, how the EPA was also freaking trying to get involved in all the puddles of water involved in the country and you know that they should they should they have to control that and stuff well actually there's been a big major score for um coal the coal industry and i guess it was peabody peabody probably a name you never heard too much peabody's in heavily is an old money name heavily involved in coal and they got some big people to argue on your behalf but from now on whenever the epa makes a ruling even though maybe I should put this out as a separate video, but I figure I put it as another point to interest in here. Every time the EPA makes a separate ruling, they have to consider the cost impact of that ruling. <laughs> Something they never did. They just can't say, oh, I'm going to pass the Clean Air Act of 1970, and that's not going to, that's it. You just got to comply with it. You know, they got to, they have, so it has, you know, it was actually brought forth by the coal industry. But then again, now since this victory has, come about it it could be applied to any industry maybe the automotive industry i don't know the the oil industry or whatever so if the epa has to con now consider the, the economic impact of their decisions and weigh that in there quite interesting so but that could also have impl implications for the mining industry too so you know it's good to have clean this and clean that and everything but if it's so damn clean that you can't get nothing done <laughs> 
it's not so good, right? <laughs> I mean, if old girl over here was standing on the top of the bike and she was worried about, you know, it's going to mess up my hair, it's gonna, I'm going to get a bug in my face or something like that, she would never get to step one, right? And that's exactly the problem with sometimes having excessive regulations in that. Now, actually, that could be a boon to our economy, a real boon, because it, it just kind of uplifts what happens with, you know, um, where industry just is not welcome in the United States. You know, right now, industry has to be more or less industry in your own backyard on your own bike. You know, you'd have to be cottage industry for crying out loud. But you know how, how many industries have been going overseas, not just because of the labor cost, but due to all the excessive regulations? Well, this new ruling about e that, you know, basically happened now against the EPA, you know, due to the Supreme Court, um, brought about by the coal industry is now saying the EPA has to force has to, has to consider um, any it weigh in any decisions that they make in, that are involving the environment or any kind of rules they're going to put down they have to consider what the costs are going to be to the industry that they're trying to regulate so that's a very 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 good news for especially for us people who work on motorcycles because you know, if we ever had to have the EPA involved in, if they start getting involved in outdoor barbecues, um, you know what they're talking about. They're talking about getting involved in, what is it, the uh, wood-burning stoves and also any kind of water that you might collect in your backyard. They're going to start going after, uh, you know, you working on your motorcycle in your driveway or something like that or your garage, you know. So you have to figure the e economic impact of that. So that's going to be another thing. That actually, I think, is a good news on the horizon for the economy because, you know, you want to keep things, you know, environmentally safe. But then again, on the other side of it, you don't want to have it so regulated that you can't get nothing done. <laughs> that's another thing, right? So anyway, I figure that's one, one aspect of something that's good. So, you know, that could help maybe bring some industry back to the USA uh, and get this economy started again, you know, because... Uh, you know, the situation actually is not so much that the U.S. worker can't compete. We just got too many regulations. And, you know, we got to, and, and, you know, I can tell you one thing. China has got a bunch of bullshit over there, too, with their central bank and funny money and everything else. It's not like it's that different. I think the main difference between us and China where we can't compete is, well, excessive regulation over here through the EPA is one. But the other thing is, too, something like what Trump was saying um, was that uh, we are making deals with China where we're getting shafted <laughs> and, you know, nobody's doing nothing about it. You know what I mean? Uh, he's right about that. And he's right about that all the way. So anyway, um, but NBC is trying to, like, you know, punish him or some kind of crap. And I'm thinking, NBC, to screw you. You know what I mean? Screw you, NBC. <laughs> like I said, I don't think television's even going to be around, man, 10 years, you know. And this Kerry guy, forget about it, you know. Forget about it. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, how many real people are out, out there that could actually do his job that, that were not so vocal, that were Vietnam veterans, that were not, you know, protesting against the United States like Yo-Yo was. Uh, so, anyway... I think the economy is taking a turn right now. I know there's a lot of rumors about Planet X coming up. It's going to cause the whole Earth to have wide burst, widespread destruction. There's also going to be something in the seven-year Shemitah, which is going to be in September. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But, yeah, there are cycles of recessions and stuff in the economy. Yeah, maybe something is happening. Um, but the Greek debt default situation, yeah. But it's like I said, it's not just that. It's it's everything. It's everything. So, um, I think the only response they have, because I can tell you one thing, Yellen makes helicopter Ben Bernanke look like a hawk. She's going to come out with, you know, <laughs> a massive freaking stimulus. She's going to come out with, I mean, that's the only, it's the only, it's the only response they could possibly have. Massive stimulus. And... You know, it's never going to go in the hands of the people that freaking produce stuff. It's going to only go in the hands of, you know what, Wall Street. But, 
Uh, at the same time, when that happens is when you have to reinvest someplace, it, it'll create bubbles. And I think it is going to create a bubble in silver again. When it takes off, it's going to take off like a damn rocket and catch you by surprise, as it always does. They don't call it the devil's medal for nothing. Problem is how high is high and how high is it going to jump? I don't know. I don't know, man. But for now, um, you know, um, I don't really think it's going to really take off until there's the Fed make some kind of major, major, major announcement that's earth-shattering and they have to react to the situation. And between now and September, a lot can happen. But I would not hold your breath on $10 silver. I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's the best time to freaking invest or not, but I would not hold your breath on ten dollars silver. I know that people have been talking about that, but do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. If you're already loaded up on silver, it doesn't necessarily mean you got to keep freaking throwing everything into one investment, you know. But the thing is, I think it's going to start panning out here before the end of the year, and who the hell knows what 2016 is going to bring already. The situation has changed drastically, and today's markets have proven that. So anyway, I don't think, uh, you know, unfortunately, I, you, you know, I'm kind of glad with Trump is actually, you know, Donald Trump is running for um, office because, you know, it's not so much is he going to win or not, but you know one thing I like about this? It's going to bring to the front the real powers behind the scenes that are the problem in this nation and you know one of the ones that are trying to cut him off is NBC right you know what I mean um so I, I I suggest you know the hell with freaking NBC CBS uh you know before Jay Leno used to be on ABC all the time and you know he told them to go screw he's doing his own thing on YouTube right so you're better off just going into other avenues of information and entertainment because I can tell you one thing. Um, I personally can see why. Well, I can see what the deal. Who's who's dealing out the policies? Who's dealing out the policies? And you know, you're just better off dealing with a bunch of ind independent people versus you know going by the puppet masters. Yeah. So screw the major media. Screw television. Television is on a way out, and uh, you know the internet is going to be. It's just basically has been on the way in, and it is the main freaking vehicle of it, entertainment and information, and it's going to be that way for the foreseeable future. You know, I, I think a lot of people are actually not even hooking up cable TV anymore. So, you know, if you really want to know what the powers of B are, they're they're basically an established media. So it's probably probably better off just supporting uh, smaller media because they'll tell you all the goods on this guy Kerry and how he's screwing us up in negotiations with Iran and everything else like that. And it's it's a matter of we're not going to be able to get out of this situation until we as a people actually start declaring our independence and on a one on one basis. And making individual moves not to support these mega corporations, uh, and that includes that includes the mega corporations involved like NBC, CBS, and ABC, and Fox, and the whole rest of the nine yards. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, I think the situation is going to change for silver by the end of the year. But then again, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know what? That's one on one investing. You know, if you really knew what basket to put it in, yeah, but you know what? Nobody knows. But I think uh silver's gonna when it takes off, it's gonna take off like a rocket and you're gonna be surprised. And that's when the pumpers are gonna be coming out saying, Buy everything at all at any cost. Now, I ain't gonna be doing that. I ain't gonna be doing that. But I got a patient waiting game going here and uh there'll be a time when I'll sell it. And maybe I'll be buying some classic motorcycles or something, for all I know.